Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about the ABS printing that I've been doing on the WeDo F152 H Pink and all the ABS prints I've been making. So stay tuned. So no live stream today. Um, we'll get back to a live stream next week where we will attempt to install a LCD screen and FD card unit, basically a control panel, on the CR the C30 Pro Pew Pew machine. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. So first let me show you the printer that I used to create these prints I'm going to show you today, and that is the WeDo, I believe it's the F152H. Let me show you. So as you guys know, I got this WeDo enclosed printer, and I've been working this bad boy pretty hard here. And it's got a full enclosure around it. And I've been printing ABS. So let me show you what I've been printing on ABS. And I put a wham bam sheet on this thing too. So I can just pop that sheet off and take my prints off easy peasy. There we go. That printer is pretty darn neat. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's been working quite well. And I've been abusing it with some ABS. <laughs> um, don't forget also, if you're watching this stream early, 2.30 today, if everything goes as planned, we launch our first Americans into space from American soil. SpaceX has the Crew Dragon that's supposed to go up at about um, 4.33 Eastern Time, which would be about 2.30 Mountain Time. So for most of you guys, whatever, um, convert from 4.30 Eastern Time, U.S. And whatever that time is for you, that's when they're, if the weather holds. Because the weather has to be good where it launches, and the weather has to be good at multiple landing locations if there has to be an abort. So if they're looking at about 60% launch probability today. So, you know, they got people on board, so they got to be careful. But anyway, that will be one of the prints I'll show you today. Crew Dragon. So anyway, I put a piece of wham-bam in that printer, and I like the results. I'm still not thrilled by the polycarbonate print surface. I'm probably going to swap that back out to a Creality-style fuzzy fake tack build surface. I just think they work better. But anyway, I printed off one of my hooks. So uh, I call a virus hook, no touch hook. So you have a little lanyard hole here so you can hang it off your shirt so you don't have to touch the infected part. You can push buttons, open doors, stuff like that. Well, here's one made of ABS. Bottom layer is a little sloppy. Not horrible, but a little sloppy. Everything else, however, is fantastic. And as you can see, very little warping. So the heated chamber has a big impact on that. Um, the ABS is, well, all plastics really are, or these, these plastics are called thermoplastics. Um, one of the primary attributes of a thermoplastic is that they expand when heated and contract when cooled. ABS was actually designed specifically with the purpose of shrinking. They wanted it to shrink so that when they made a mold of like a car bumper, for example, um, they would spray molten ABS into the mold and when it cooled it would actually release itself from the mold it would cool and contract and, and release itself from the mold but that causes us a problem with 3d printing because <laughs> you get uh, let's see which one's warped this one didn't stick perfectly so you can see there's a bit of a, a warp there where it's not quite straight here but that's a minor warp mind you uh, warping can get really bad on ABS it could, to the point where you could have a print where individual layers tear themselves apart. Um, and that's because it contracts when it cools, it shrinks, it gets smaller. And um, that also creates problems with dimensional accuracy. So you have to pre-scale your parts and it's not like a consistent algorithm either. Like this kind of a part is going to shrink differently than this kind of part. And this area of the print is going to shrink differently than this area of the print. Because that part has infill. Um, so the primary thing you need for ABS is an enclosure. An enclosure allows you to print the entire part by keeping it all warm, which reduces how much shrinkage occurs, and then slowly permit the part to shrink all together all at once. And you have less chance of cracking that way. It's much easier for individual layers to crack than a whole entire part to crack. Um, those forces will always be there, but they are more under control if you can cool the entire part all together instead of layer by layer by layer. The biggest hindrance to ABS printing is oddly enough not the enclosure as far as heat retention that helps tremendously. It's drafts. Even a, even a little 
bit of air blowing over the part while it's printing. <laughs> Destroy it. <laughs> It'll just kill it. Any draft whatsoever. So your primary purpose of an enclosure is draft protection. And your secondary purpose is to retain heat. So as you can see here, I have quite a few enclosures. This is a wham bam enclosure. This is a creality enclosure. These are the kind of things where you put the entire printer inside the enclosure. And so the heat from the hot end and mostly the heated bed is retained inside that enclosure and keeps the parts from shrinking too much. The we do, on the other hand, is a printer built with an enclosure. You're going to see other printers like that, like I had the um, Flashforge Geiger 2. It was like that as well. Had a, the printer was fully enclosed. Well, the we do is a fully enclosed printer. Fully assembled, by the way, too. Almost no assembly required. So, the purpose of the enclosure is to, number one, stop drafts. And number two, retain heat. Now, as far as I know, no company is allowed to sell an actively heated enclosure. You can, of course, do that yourself because there's still a patent out on that. And they somehow pulled some shenanigans with the USPTO and got their patent extended longer than normally is possible. But anyway, a few more years, that'll be gone. But anyway, you can do it yourself. A passively heated enclosure is more than good enough for ABS printing. And as an end user, you, of course, can add a heater if you wish. I might actually be experimenting with that. Just get a little $10 Walmart heater and stick it in the enclosure and <laughs> add some heat, see what happens. Um, a little 200 watt heater would be more than enough. Matter of fact, it would probably be too much. I might look into putting a thermostat on it, turning down the power going to it. Um, there are resistive heat elements, so it might be possible for me to lower the voltage and just have it produce less heat. I don't know how that works yet. I'm going to play with that. But anyway, um, flexible print in place parts work fine. So here is your Flexi Rex. And he flexes just like he's supposed to. I also did the butterfly. So here's your flexi butterfly. Perfect prints. I have zero complaints whatsoever. Both the bottom layers and the top layers. Come on. Come on. Look fine to me. I have no, there we go. I guess it was too white, it was too shiny. <laughs> so there is the flexi butterfly. And waterproof prints, no problem. This print is waterproof, airtight, and watertight. It is holy water. And the outside is dry. Uh, a way you can test your watertight prints is to blow through them. Stick your mouth over it. Trust me, you will notice if the air is escaping from your mouth through the print. You'll be able to feel that pressure change. And if you can put your mouth over that and blow into it and no air gets out, it's also watertight. So that was not a problem. This is using my standard profile of using... Um, um, four or five bottom layers with different infill directions to make sure the bottom is sealed and over extruding at 1.5 extrusion multiplier for the wall so it's nice and thick and strong and watertight. So as you see, beautiful print. That is a testament to both the 3D Sciotech ABS filament and also the WeDo printer. So let me give you a nice close-up of that. You can see it's a very clean print. As with most of these enclosed printers, you can see there is a little bit of micro noise. See that right there? Right up here. You can see the micro noise in the prints. Not bad. Not horrible. I mean, you're not, you're not going to make showroom finished prints with this, but, um, you know, prints at 12 inches distance, you can't tell. That micro noise is very minor. And you get very clean prints, nice thick walls. And in commemoration of today, we are watching Crew Dragon in the space. Um, let me find out who the modeler is, because I want to give him credit. And I found it. It is Dragon 2 by SpaceX. The modeler is Zastro. So he had a model that was very, very close to being what I wanted. And I requested that he make a modification to the model, and he agreed. And came through with flying colors. I wanted to vase mode print the model. And it only needs a few tiny little modifications to make vase mode possible. And the result is, I vase mode printed SpaceX Crew Dragon. So I made two, of course. This one um, popped off the bed a tiny bit, so I increased the brim size. And no pop off on this one. This one's perfect. I also added a bit of integrity to the bottom. Because I'm going to actually put this on a model rocket. So the idea is this will attach to here. And now this will be a nose cone on a model rocket. 
So this is going to be fun. Um, so the astronauts will be inside the capsule here. Um, this will separate when it gets into orbit, and this will be just the capsule. Um, but the details are beautiful. So the issue was a couple of these little underhang holes and the top of these little edges here were separation because they were hard right angles, meaning they were parallel with the print surface, which you can't do um, with vase mode. He made those little tiny tweaks to the model, and this whole thing, except for the tip of the nose right there, you can actually see it. See that more opaque section up top there? Because that goes horizontal, you can't vase mode print that. So that little tiny section is normal printed. Everything else is vase mode printed. And this is ABS, which means I can put this in a hot car in the summer and it's not going to melt. <laughs> That's the advantage of ABS. It can handle 100C before it begins to deform. So you're never going to see those temperatures in a car, which means this is car safe. You, know, you take my standard PLA prints, you stick this bad boy in a car, and it's not going to last very long. <laughs> This will warp very quickly in a car, in a hot summer car, especially out here where the, the you know, even if it's, you know, 60 degrees outside, it could be 110 degrees in your car because of the sun beating on it. Um, so, yeah, this is what you can do with ABS, and it becomes so much easier when you have an enclosure. The enclosure um, traps the heat inside the printer. So your 100 degree Celsius heat bed is actually heating up the inside of the enclosure. My typical enclosure temperature was 35-40C. Um, it'll be a little hotter at the top, but you really need to be measuring down where the bed is, where the actual print is. And down there, I'm reaching around 40 centigrade on a hot day, 35 on a cold day. But um, it makes it possible to print ABS even in winter. <laughs> even when it's a little chilly out, you can make some beautiful ABS prints that actually work to make, you know, somewhat more functional parts and that's it it's pretty cool i'm having a lot of fun my next uh, the next one i build will be pla because i don't have an enclosed printer big enough although i do have a new enclosure from creality and this one should hold um, a cr10 or larger size printer i'm hoping that my cr10 s4 or chiron will fit in there we'll find out um I'm also waiting for Wham Bam to make a larger enclosure because I love their enclosures. Their enclosures are worth every penny. They're just, they're so, pop, over the printer, done. <laughs> it's that easy. It's so easy. On, a, on, a, on an Ender 3, you literally, you take off the little stack lock spool holder thing. You slide the printer over, or the enclosure over the printer. You put the spool holder back on, you feed your filament in, you're done. It's that easy. It does not get hot enough in these enclosed spaces to damage your electronics. You're only talking about 40, maybe maximum 50 centigrade. That is well within the operating specs of all these electronics. Um, your hot end cooling isn't going to work the greatest, but you're using ABS, so that's not really that important. Uh, you, you do not want to use PLA in an enclosure. So, for example, when I print with PLA on the WeDo, I open the top and I open the sides a crack because it will get too hot in there for PLA. It will droop and it'll be messy. The hot end will heat creep. Um, same thing with PETG. Be especially careful with PETG because PET, some PETGs are very soft. You, you could almost call a PETG a flexible. Well, you put it in a heated enclosure, it becomes a flexible. <laughs> I had PETG wrap around my extruder just like the TPU does. Uh, because I goofed and forgot to open the enclosure when I printed <laughs> I was on the flash forge. But, uh, yeah, if you're watching this early, you know, in the next couple of hours after I post it, um, about, what, two hours from now, three hours from now, depending on when I get this posted, be sure to watch Crew Dragon make their first flight attempt to launch astronauts into space. And if you have any questions about ABS printing, let me know down below. But the trick is you have to stop drafts. And ideally, you want to retain heat so that the, and when you're done printing, you don't want to open the enclosure, especially if you have a nice thin part like this. Um, what you really want to do is leave the enclosure closed and let the printer cool down the ambient on its own. And um, use a Wham Bam style. If you don't use Wham Bam, there's others available, but I use Wham Bam. Um, TH3D makes some, uh, a couple of the Chinese vendors make some. But use a flex plate. It's a lot easier to deal with ABS prints because. Um, they're a little more delicate. The um, ABS plastic is tougher than PLA, 
but it's weaker than GLA. So strength is how much force can I apply to it. Toughness is more like impact. So toughness is, you know, giving something a thump or a whack. So um, as far as strength, PLA is significantly stronger. As far as layer bonding, PLA is significantly stronger. But ABS has higher toughness. It's a little bit more of a flexible filament. So it has a little more shock toughness give. And of course, the huge advantage of ABS is temperature compatibility. If you make something like this and stick it outside, it's not going to warp. If you leave something like this in your car, it's not going to warp. Well, if you leave something like this in your car, it's done. <laughs> uh, I have to, when I go to rocket launches, I have to make sure to leave, you know, all of my windows open a crack, you know, and a decent crack in order to make sure it can't get too hot in the car to start deforming all of those parts. But that's it. I am still having an issue with bed adhesion. I still haven't figured out that perfect sauce for bed adhesion. Apparently, ABS slurry is probably my best bet. So I will be experimenting with acetone and melted ABS to make an ABS slurry. Also, apparently, um, hairspray on glass works really well for ABS, but I want to use a flex plate. So I'm wondering if hairspray on PEI on a flex plate would work. I'm not sure. PEI is smooth like glass, so maybe that will work. I don't know. Um, I just play with it until I get it to stick. Usually, it's, I'm in there with the minimum pliers to pull off the blobs, and then it starts laying down, and I leave it alone. <laughs> so a nice big brim, so you have time to make sure that brim gets stuck down. If you have any questions, post down below. I will do my best to answer. I will post links to the files here, as well as the filament, as well as the printer, so you can check them out. Enclosed printers are not cheap. They are much, much more expensive than buying a regular printer and an enclosure. An Ender 3 is 230 bucks. That enclosure is 130 bucks. So for 360 bucks, you have an enclosed printer. While if you were to buy an enclosed printer, you're talking, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, or much, much more for the larger ones. I believe the WeDo is 600 bucks or something like that, and the Flashforge Guider 2 is like 1500 bucks. But they are turnkey solutions. You load the filament, you hit go, and they just work. So that's it. I will see you guys later. Uh, hopefully I'll have another video this weekend and hopefully I'll see you in the live stream next week where we try to put a control panel and screen on the Pew Pew machine. More to come.